my mom had me in something musical all the you know since I was like four you know um she had me in violin violin lessons when I was four and um she had me in a theory class when I was four it was like a you know like a a, a, a class for young for, you know four-year-olds five-year-olds mm. to kind of like just learn the basics theory and just have fun with music mm -hmm. and the teacher came out one day after the class and grabbed my mom and said I think you should keep him in music it's funny I started playing the saxophone because uh, I was in third I think third grade third or fourth grade and uh, a man came to my elementary school and showed us a video. He was a he he was from a um like you know like a like a band instrument company. Came and showed us this video that was basically um it was like a cartoon. It's a Disney cartoon about the evolution of musical instruments. And he came and he, you know, he uh, showed us this cartoon. And afterwards, he asked us who wanted to play. Does anyone want to play? And my, like, I was like one of the first people that raised my hand. But my mom was really, you know, she was really just playing music all the time. And as I got older and I started looking at the records she had, you know, my mom had Ornette, Holman, Farrell Sanders, John Coltrane, you know, and then she would have Prince and Michael Jackson and, uh, you know, um, uh, Stravinsky. Uh, she had a whole. She had, she has had a whole bunch of different music in the house. You know that she was probably playing. I think that was my introduction to saxophone without even really knowing it. When I got older, when, and when I started playing music, you know, I was hearing Charlie Parker records, and um, I was hearing like uh, maybe some Cannonball Adderley records, but it was Bobby Watson that like. That's what, when I heard Bobby Watson, it was like, oh, this is what I want to do, you know? Wow, wow. Uh, I really liked his, his, his playing and his, I liked him as a composer. And that was really like the first, you know, record that, you know, and I was playing, but I was, you know, I was playing and I was like, you know, but when I heard that record, I was like, oh man. And then I got to meet him. You know, he was one of the artists that came down to play and gave workshops gave a workshop and I got to meet him and play for him and we developed this relationship you know and we're still like you know we're friends to this day you know he's like a hero of mine There's no way that I'm ever going to sound like anyone that I really want to sound like. And that's something that I've told my, I, I tell my students, you know, and um, something that I've been told, but, you know, I don't care if I work, listen to Charlie Parker and only listen to Charlie Parker and transcribe. I might come closer than a lot of people if that's all I was listening to and I want it to sound like me. But it's never going to be Charlie Parker. That's something that when people study the instrument, that they have to be aware of. They have to be aware of, you know, the fact that, you know, and I, and I think especially now because a lot of young musicians don't want to dive that far into the history of the music because excuse me, because they want to have their own sound, you know. But I really think that, you know, I'm not going to say it's a mistake because I, I, I think everyone has their own path. But I think that uh, diving that far, diving deep into the history and getting all that information will only help you develop your sound even more. If I'm totally honest, I grew up listening to The Tribe Called Quest as well as Wayne Shorter. You know, I grew up listening to Prince and Michael Jackson as well as you know uh, Billy Holiday and and, and 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 Joe Williams and and Nat King Cole, I think part of being honest is not 
ignoring your influences, you know, um, and embracing them. Like two of the most important schools for me um, are the schools, you know, John Coltrane and Charlie Parker. When I'm taken from both of them, both with Charlie Parker is the 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 lyricism, the melody, the rhythm, you know, um, the facility, you know, the technique, being able to, you know, um, to play uh, anything that comes to his mind. It's something that I want to be able to do. Uh, the restraint, um, the blues, and, you know, going to train, you know, it's all of that and the spirituality. I listen to myself, you know. I listen to a lot of recordings, um, a lot of my own recordings. If we're not really paying attention to what we're doing, um, we might be doing things that don't really reflect what we're thinking. What I was trying to do was find out what I liked and what I didn't like about my playing, you know. But the older I got, the more I started to understand that um, that's good, but also you have to embrace some things about who you are that you might not like, you know, and some things you can develop, you know, but you don't have to discard those those elements that you don't like. You have to embrace them. As, as, as kids, sometimes there are things that we're teased about, you know, um, that we might feel insecure about. But the more that we embrace them and love ourselves for who we are, then the stronger those elements can shine. You know, this pandemic made me aware of this. Um, adjusting. Um, because none of us saw this coming. I was telling my student, you know, for me, everything was always about balance. You know, um, having a gig, being out in the road, you know, practicing, teaching, you know, composing. And when those three elements, well, two elements, you know, having a gig, you know, being out in the road, when they disappear, you know, your mind starts to, you know, my mind drifted to, you know, well, when am, am I going to play again? When am I going to play again? And I think that's another thing that kind of got to me with this break is that connection that you make with people it's not, it's, I, I can't even explain it, you know. But I think that's the one thing that kind of broke me down. When I play, I really try to channel something and connect with people. love there and it's all of that that you that you want to share with people and not being able to do it <laughs> is a hard thing no the interesting thing is i did a performance with ej strickland at smalls um what, about a month ago and uh, a little less than a month ago and i was nervous because i hadn't performed in what five months I practiced at home, but I hadn't performed. And, you know, it's funny, Marcus Strickland said the same, well he, well, he said it and I thought it. He was like, man, I didn't know how I was gonna get through this. <laughs> and I felt like that was part of my thought process this whole time was that, you know, the playing with my, my, my I would lose something because I hadn't been playing. You know, get up there and play and feel the way I felt after not playing, it made me realize, you know, it, 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 it made me realize that I'm always gonna be me, you know, that where I've, where I've gotten so far, um, I mean, unless I just don't play my own at all, you know, um, or, 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 you know, if some other circumstances have happened, um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be me. And it's always important to be conscious of the fact that 
you can still develop and grow. There's a lot more to learn. There's a lot more to do. But I did an interview with Lou Donaldson and I asked him about Charlie Parker. And um, he told me that, you know, he told me about when he first heard Charlie Parker, he said the thing that got me about Charlie Parker was he had the technique and he had amazing sense of harmony and melody, but that's not what you were thinking when you listened to Charlie Parker. You're thinking art, you know? You're thinking art, um, you're thinking beauty, you know? And and when he said that to me, I was just like, it, 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 it hit, like I'll never forget him saying that to me because I felt like, yeah, you know, that's it. Like, I want to, like, I don't want people to think about my technique. I, I, I want to connect with people on a spiritual level, um, on a creative level. Um, and I want what I've worked on, what I've developed to not, to, to, to be it, to be an afterthought. Some people do want to be known for their technique. You know, some people do want to know, be known for the flashiness or whatever. But I think a lot of us want to be known we just want to create art, you know, we, we, we want to make people feel something. We want to make people dance. We want to make people think, you know, um, and feel. Hey.